just been talking. We've been talking about this game all all morning, Paul. I, I mean, I can't wait. I've got all, I've got a night off. I'm having a bit of Italian, a butter pasta. I'm gonna have a glass of red, and I can't wait for it, mate. I bet you're feeling the same. Oh, I'm buzzing for it. It's going to that, that atmosphere at Etihad is going to be absolutely buzzing tonight. Um, and it's just it's two top teams, the two best teams in the Premier League going toe to toe. I don't think Mikel changes approach and how he plays. And Pep definitely won't. And I'm looking, it's going to be a right ding dong of a game and I'm absolutely buzzing for it. And it's only like 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what I'm going to be like. By <laughs> no, I know, 12 hours time. Um, Paul, if you. What do you reckon Mikel Arteta, that's probably a better way to phrase it, what do you reckon Mikel Arteta is going to do to try and win this game? Because I read a couple of places, I think Tony Adams saying, go for the draw, it's fine, or, or a point is fine. I think I have to go and win. What do you think? How's he going to do it? Yeah, I think they have to go and win, especially after the last two results, Laura. Um, you know, I was at the game at the Etihad, the FA Cup game just before Christmas, um, and Arsenal were excellent. I know City ended up winning 1-0, one, one, but they, they virtually went man for man mm. to Man City. I've never seen Ederson kick as long as they did because they made sure that just the front three went and pressed the back four. The middle of the park, there was no room and they had to go long. So um, I expect the same tonight, but you know, Arsenal at that point were super confident in great form, flying at the top of the league. I just think the last sort of three games, the last sort of 10 days or so that I've played could damage their confidence a little bit. And City at the minute, they're just absolutely flying. You know, the they know how to chase teams down. They know how to win the league from the top. And this is their time of the season. Now. It's 16 games unbeaten now they are. And they're scoring goals left, right and centre. And we all talk about how fantastic they are with, with De Bruyne, with Grealish, with Bernardo Silva, with Erling Haaland, and on and on and on. But the back four have been absolutely sensational, which is not something you usually put at a pet team, a Man City team. You know, they've been playing four centre-halves there. They look solid. And they actually look as if they want to defend, which, which nowadays is is not really heard of, you know, we look at the centre-halves and defenders now and first and foremost people want to play out to the back, but Ruben Diaz has come back in and he's a proper defender and, and that spreads right through the team. You touched on it there Paul, I mean defensively have been excellent, well, I was down at Wembley on Saturday uh, and I thought Sheffield Jenny did, did alright first half I've got to say, but ended up a comfortable victory um, for City, but the point I was wanting to emphasise, I'm looking at the bench at the weekend there, Diaz, Stones, Rodri, De Bruyne, Ederson, Foden. And one player I want to talk about that came off the bench, I thought was excellent, by the way, Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer's a super talent, Ali, you know, and he's getting managed the right way. There's a similar clamour to what Phil Foden was like four or five years ago about should he go out and loan, is he better going out and getting games in the championship? Um, but these young kids with that amount of talent, Pep wants to, Pep wants to keep them there. Yeah. What better environment have they got than trading every day with De Bruyne and with Diaz? Mm with Rodri, Cole Palmer especially, you know. Um, he can play as a number 10 role, he can play as a 6, he's effective out wide, he can play as a false number 9. And he's super, super talented. He's, he's going, he is going to have to bide his time because of the quality that's in front of him. But the improvement over the last 18 months, being in that environment at Manchester City under Pep and the players, it's very similar to what Phil Foden was like four or five years ago. And he's doing all right, isn't he? <laughs> I think she was trying to say quick prediction. I'm not sure it came out that way, Paul, but I think she was going for the quick prediction. No one wants what I, I said. Called, I, I thought she was calling me an in there. But it was just Sorry. Um, quick prediction. I, I, can't, I can't see anything, Alan, other than a Man, man City win. Oh, I, just, oh. I know. Sorry, Laura. I know you're not the, I just think the form they're in, they're steamrolling teams at the minute. We know how to react in these big games, but I think there'll be goals. So I'm going to go Man City 3-1. Okay, yeah. excellent. Um, and you'll know what she called you there, mate. Don't sorry, worry about yeah, that. I'm very sorry, Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul, Paul, really quickly. Last time I saw Paul, it was on FaceTime because I met his son at Winter Wonderland and I basically yeah. adopted him all night, made sure I looked after him for you, I promise. Oh, he brilliant. was a wonderful boy. Hey. Well, he was a happy boy with that, trust me. <laughs> I'm sure he was, I'm sure he was. Oh, my baby. friends loved him as well, honestly. I thought he was my little brother. Um, yeah. Paul, thank you so much. Um, enjoy enjoy the me. game tonight. Thanks for coming on. Great to see you guys. You too. Take care. Uh, Paul Dickoff there, former Arsenal and Man City striker, predicting a City win. Will we get a single pundit to predict an Arsenal win? Hmm. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.